Group 1 metals are very reactive because they have low ionization energies. One of the ways that indicates that high reactivity is the way that we store the metals. Group 1 metals are typically stored under kerosene or mineral oil to prevent or limit their reaction with the oxygen in the air. Let's look at some of the physical properties for Group 1 metals. We'll start out with lithium. The lithium is coated at this point in time with a layer of both the oxide and the nitride and we end up with a fairly dull gray appearance. Group 1 metals tend to be relatively soft and we can easily cut the metal with a knife. What we can do is we can see the shiny metallic surface underneath. If we bring in a conductivity tester, we can see that the lithium is an excellent conductor of electricity. If we add a piece of lithium to the water, one of the things that we noticed is the fact that the lithium floats. Group 1 metals are less dense than water. We also see that the lithium reacts very rapidly with the water. This is a single displacement reaction producing hydrogen gas and lithium hydroxide. The lithium hydroxide is very water soluble and dissolves in the water. The hydrogen gas escapes. If we trap some of the gas in a test tube, we can test that the gas is actually hydrogen by testing its flammability. We can test that lithium hydroxide has been produced by adding an acid-base indicator. If we add some phenothaline, phenothaline is colorless in acid and red-purple in base. We can tell that the solution is basic due to the formation of the lithium hydroxide. We'll go down the column on the periodic table in group 1 and look at sodium. Like the lithium, the sodium is stored in mineral oil to minimize reaction with the oxygen in the air. If we remove a piece of sodium metal, we notice that it's also coated over with an oxide coating. Group 1 metals become softer as you go down the column. The sodium is much easier to cut than the lithium. As we cut off the oxide layer, we can see the shiny metal underneath. It coats over very rapidly with a layer of oxide. The sodium is a metal and is an excellent conductor of electricity. If we take a piece of the sodium metal and add it to water, we notice a much more rapid reaction with the water. Like lithium, the sodium is less dense in water and floats. The metal moves across the surface being pushed by the hydrogen gas that is produced. As you go down the column with group 1 metals, the melting point of the metal decreases. The reaction is very exothermic, which causes the sodium metal to melt. The metal contracts into a very compact spherical form. We can again test that hydrogen gas is being produced by this single displacement reaction by trapping the gas and testing its flammability. We can test for the fact that we produce sodium hydroxide by adding phenothaline. The phenothaline turns a purple-red color due to the presence of the hydroxide ions indicating the formation of the sodium hydroxide. If we continue down the column to potassium, we see that the potassium metal is also stored under mineral oil to minimize its reaction with the oxygen in the air. If we remove a piece of potassium metal, we can see that the potassium is coated over with a gray coating of the oxide. 
as we continue down the column, group one metals get softer and softer. The potassium cuts very easily. As we cut through the metal, we expose the shiny metal surface underneath. The potassium is extremely soft. We can easily flatten out the potassium metal. It has a consistency of cream cheese. The potassium is a metal and is an excellent conductor of electricity. If we add a piece of potassium metal to water, we see that it reacts much more rapidly with the water than the sodium. As you go down the column, the ionization energy decreases and the metal reactivity increases. The reaction is very exothermic and the hydrogen that's produced ignites. We can test for the formation of potassium hydroxide by adding phenethylene. The solution turns red-purple due to the formation of potassium hydroxide. 